Monday, August 10th, 2020, Morris, Illinois. Meteorologist Andrew Pritchard is bracing for a storm that spans his entire horizon. Bearing down on him is a 100-mile-long mesoscale convective system, or MCS, that had just laid waste to eastern Iowa. Illinois is now in its path. Forecasts the day prior didn't even signal for this type of storm, never mind a record-breaking one. As the preceding shelf cloud blots out the sun overhead, the intensity begins to ramp up as wind and rain begin to assault his vehicle. Winds are now measured at over 80 miles per hour in nearby Plainfield. Once the worst had passed, he ventured into town, where he found trees and power lines in the streets. This was not an isolated sight, as the swath of damage left was hundreds of miles long, spanning several states. The worst could be seen 170 miles to the west of Morris, where Cedar Rapids, Iowa, took the brunt of the storm. Gusts of 140 miles per hour ravaged the city. The August 10th derecho would go down as the costliest mesoscale storm in American history, with a staggering price tag of $11 billion in damage to both property and agriculture. 1.9 million utility customers would be left without power, Hundreds of injuries were reported, and unfortunately, there were also four fatalities associated with the storm. How is it possible that a storm of this magnitude could go unforecasted for such a period of time that even the morning of the storm, it was unrealized the scope of what was going to happen? What does it take to spawn a storm that can last nearly 24 hours and span nearly a thousand miles? Let us take a deeper look into the August 2020 Midwest derecho. Before we get into the specifics of the August 10th, 2020 event, let us go into what makes a storm a derecho. Derechos are a special subset of straight-line windstorms that have to meet a number of criteria. They have to have caused a widespread wind damage swath that spans greater than 250 miles long and is at least 60 miles wide. There has to be continuous sustained winds of at least 58 miles per hour throughout its lifespan and contain gusts of over 75 miles per hour. A storm becomes a derecho once it is classified by the National Weather Service after the storm reports come in. Of all of the derechos that have occurred over the years, they usually fall into one of two categories, serial or progressive. Serial derechos are associated with a strong surface low and typically occur in the spring and fall. They are comprised of one or several bow echoes and propagate northeast with the motion of the surface low. Progressive derechos are associated with a large ridge in the jet stream, usually northwest or westerly flow events. They typically occur in the summer months and can be notoriously tricky to forecast for. The August 10th event was a progressive derecho. With derechos being such large-scale storms with Boeing segments of over 100 miles long, with all of the forecasting infrastructure that we have nowadays, these, in theory, should be easy to forecast events. However, this isn't quite the case. The atmospheric ingredients needed for a derecho are actually not super abstract. In fact, during the summer months, they are actually present many days out of the summer. An environment with moderate unidirectional wind shear, modest to strong instability, and potent moisture content is the type of environment that supports derechos. But there isn't a derecho every day of the summer because they lack a critical trigger mechanism. And oftentimes, these trigger mechanisms can be extremely subtle that a computer model or even a forecaster may not pick up on. The first day one outlook for August 10th from the Storm Prediction Center saw a slight risk or a level 2 out of 5 for severe weather over an area that wasn't even aligned with the eventual impact region. In the overnight hours of the 9th and into the 10th, an elevated storm complex from South Dakota was moving eastward behind a cold front. Typically, this overnight storm would replace the charged environment with a stable and cooled air mass. Short-range models projected that this would be the case. However, this storm persisted eastward. 
Forecasters at the SPC had to rely on experience for the 8 a.m. outlook. Models struggled with the evolution of this setup, which was a common theme in 2020. The lack of commercial aviation that year meant that there was a lack of inputs of atmospheric data for these models to work off of. This 8 a.m. outlook was drastically different from the 1 a.m. release, denoting a much larger slight risk area and adding an enhanced contour over the eventual region of the propagating storm. As the MCS pushed further east, its cool gust front forced the warm, moist air up and into the updraft. The storm began to bow outward as converging air masses ramp up a rear inflow jet, surging the storm forward. As long as there was a primed environment to feed off of ahead of the bow echo, the derecho would maintain a steady state, surging on for hundreds of miles. Just before noon, the storm prediction center upped the risk once again to a moderate risk, the second highest category, driven by a 45% hatched wind threat. Just west of Cedar Rapids, the MCS overtakes the cold front, entering an even warmer and more unstable air mass. This sudden change in fuel supercharged the derecho, prompting extremely volatile downbursts. A mezzanite site in Atkin, Iowa, just west of downtown Cedar Rapids, measured the strongest wind gusts of the event at 126 miles per hour. Damage around Cedar Rapids indicated wind speeds of up to 140. Even more alarming were the miles upon miles of farm fields once filled with corn, now all flattened. The storm was not finished after Iowa, however. The environment was still locked and loaded in northern Illinois and into Indiana. This is where Andrew Pritchard would document the historic storm firsthand. Even outside of the most intense damage in eastern Iowa, northern Illinois was severely impacted. It wasn't until nighttime when the derecho would finally weaken over the Indiana-Ohio border, a whopping 700 miles from its origin. Impacts from this derecho would be felt in the weeks, months, and years to come. The sheer volume of agricultural impacts from the storm was borderline astronomical. 14 million acres of crops had been in the derecho's path, which accounts for 66% of all of Iowa's corn and soybean yield for the year. The worst impacts accounted for 20% of Iowa's total yield, rendering it near total loss. Not only were the crops impacted, but much of the supporting farming infrastructure had also been damaged. An estimated 100 million bushels worth of grain bin storage had been destroyed, alongside many of the grain elevators and other harvesting equipment. To compound the devastating effects of the storm, response from government officials was delayed, taking three days for aid efforts to begin. Local residents felt ignored, and it took individual efforts banding together to help those in need. Federal response was lackluster, likely given the ongoing pandemic and upcoming November election. Nonetheless, it became a site of neighbor helping neighbor to help get places like Cedar Rapids back on their feet. The August 10th, 2020 derecho that swept across the Midwestern United States stands as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of some of these severe weather events. This particular progressive derecho left a lasting impact, causing widespread damage across several states and affecting millions of people. The rapid evolution of this storm coupled with its intensity posed many challenges for both meteorologists and first responders when it came to both forecasting and responding to the event. The aftermath of this event highlighted the importance of a robust early warning system as well as measures in place to respond to the disaster itself so that communities can have a lessened impact. As meteorologists continue to research the August 10th, 2020 event, there are lessons that are being learned that can be applied to both the forecasts and responses to the next sudden derecho event. And as always, stay safe out there when it comes to severe weather.